it is remarkable how much Baldur's Gate 3 is like D&D. It is more than I had ever anticipated. And certainly there are plenty of differences here and there, but like I can't think of a better tutorial. If you are curious about D&D, play Baldur's Gate 3, and you're going to have a fairly good sense of like the action economy, the weirdness of D&D, the choices that you have and, and how they affect the game. You've managed to capture so much of that. Like, like well, why was that so important? I think it came from like top down, like everyone, like Sven especially, just like massive D&D fans. I think to get to be the studio that like revised Baldur's Gate, like we had to make it like Baldur's Gate in the modern era, which meant fifth edition. We just wanted the game to kind of like represent like our games we have like at home with like our friends and family. Um, and it has turned into, like you say, kind of this like good introduction for people who like video games, have an interest in D&D. But this sort of like, is a nice sort of like cross pollination of kind of like, all right, this is my gateway drug to D&D now. If there is a D&D player that has not tried Baldur's Gate 3, how do you convince them? Because I think a big of that, big part of the appeal is how much it feels like D&D yeah. and also how similar it is. Like, how do you convince someone to play D&D or like, what is your advice to D&D players who want to jump into this video game? I think for anyone coming from D&D into Baldur's Gate, I think we support everything you want to do. All your wild dreams on a tabletop, we tried our absolute hardest to make that, like what you do with your friends is what you do in the game. Every time we'd like look at a class, we say like, what does this class mean to tabletop players? Like I watch all the videos on YouTube of like, what do players think about these classes? And like, what's that vision? Like what does a barbarian mean to them? We tried our absolute best to make it like true in the game. And when you're playing a game as well, we do have some slight house rules here and there, but for the most part, like all your iconic actions are there. All the kind of like the big spells, like we included over 600 spells, which are directly taken from like the player's handbook. And in some special cases, we've looked at additional sources. So Wild Magic Barbarian isn't from the player's handbook. We yeah. just added that because we really thought it was cool. And we thought Barbarian just needed that little bit extra because wizards get eight subclasses. And we're like, that's not fair. Come on, Barbarians yeah. need some more love. See, so yeah, everything you love from the tabletop that is special about these classes, we brought forward for us. And everything where you and your friends can develop a story with a dungeon master, we've tried our absolute hardest to think of like every way to beat a situation. Um, for example, like you spoke earlier about the bank vault, like, there's a hundred ways to break into that bank vault that you find. What's your advice for people who maybe are now curious about Dungeons and Dragons in terms of a tabletop experience after they've played their character all the way through to level 12? I say my advice is like have fun with it and don't stress too much about the rules. If you're with a new group of players, like you're all learning, like it doesn't matter if you misinterpret a rule here or there, um, or if you're indeed joining a group with like an experienced DM, like if these are people you like and people you get on with, like you're there for fun. It's not like a, a tournament match. Like I quite like Warhammer, but that's such a different vibe. Like when I go to the table with my Warhammer minis, it is quite fun, but it's competitive, whereas Dungeons and Dragons, like, you might see the DM as your adversary, but your DM, they're really there for fun. Like, a good DM will always kind of, like, they want the party to succeed. They want them to kind of think on their feet, and they want them to use that creativity they might have had in Baldur's Gate. We, you will use that on the tabletop as well and find, like, unique ways to kind of, like, break puzzles, um, annoy your DM by completely going around the back door and, like, finding the villain that way. And you have Dungeon Masters often like pretend to kind of be the villain to players just to like create that kind of like nice adversary feel, you mm. know, to feel like the DMs against you, but it's all theatrics really. Ultimately, they want you to have a good time. They want you to have a yeah. good choice. So you are in fact a Dungeon Master, correct? Yes. Reluctant. Reluctant Dungeon Master. You would like to be a player. Yes, I love that. But you are very much stuck in this role of like forever DM. Yeah, we have multiple groups of like my partner's friends being like, we want to try D&D. And I'm like, all right, outcomes like Fundellen again. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, uh, what Dungeon Master advice do you have for folks? Has playing Baldur's Gate 3 informed some of how you, you Dungeon Master now? I can't say it's massively changed it. I think like this is going to sound crazy as someone that like my job is about rules. Is like when I DM, I just break rules all the time. Like hit dice don't mean anything. Like <laughs> what I'm rolling behind the scenes sometimes is just bollocks. Like there are dice being rolled, but those numbers sometimes I'm just fudging. Cause like, it's about a story and like bringing people together and just letting people do cool stuff. Um, so as a dungeon master, just play it fast and loose the rules. Pick the rules that work at times. Um, so there's some structure, but don't be scared to fudge things. 
being that you are involved in systems and everything else, what's your, what's your best advice for anyone who's playing these different, you have so many classes and subclasses and all of this. What's your advice for making characters? I think like, don't be scared with what you pick. I, we, we will hold your hands. Like we'll give you really good advice going for the character creator. And our, like, our defaults are usually very friendly. Like this is the, how you get the best out of the class, like take these spells or this passive set's pretty good for you. Um, but don't be scared about making mistakes in your choices. Like we have um, the respec system was quite important to us. Like it's supposed to be a sandbox. So if you don't like your class, fine, scrap it, try something new and just play with it.